like day three the plan is uh, or the the plan it's not going to plan this is not what we intended to do there should have been another loop of nine but again the forecast is horrendous uh, although it's not too bad at the moment but anyway the point is this i've uh, sacked it off yesterday as you know due to the conditions but also realized that there's something uh, fundamentally wrong in terms of the golf swing i haven't done this for quite some time and i've called up the help of someone you might remember from the channel he's coming in early before uh, his day starts and he's gonna help fix me i hope right back to it lou back on the channel he's coming early on his day off and he's gonna help you, you you reckon that you guarantee that you'll sort me out in uh, half an hour? I mean, guarantee. I'm a golf pro. That's something from Harry Potter, mate. <laughs> We've missed that. Right, so yeah, Louis back. He's, he's had the call for help. Um, it's just gone. I'm struggling, mate. Ever, ever since lockdown, I've come back first few games. I was actually all right. Uh, short game a bit if people expected. Yeah, yeah, a bit busty. So um, what, what is it that's up? So, let's so there's a few things really. I don't know they're all, you know, within the same thing. Bit of a loss of power. Yeah. Definitely yardages have dropped off. Okay. My strike is poor. I've got a bit of an issue with me sort of hand positioning. I'm messing around quite a lot. Whereas when everything's the last year or so, fairly playing some half decent golf. So you know, when you just walk yeah, into yeah, the yeah. ball. You don't think about nothing. So where my hands have been for the last year, I've no idea. Definitely the time off, isn't it? Yeah. I'm seeing a lot about at the minute with people. You know, everyone at least, no matter where you are, I've had a couple of months off. So, so now I'm getting so. to the tee and all of a sudden, like, I'm like, do my hands go here, there? Do you know, it, it feels right. awkward. So then, like I said, strike's been poor. As you know, over the last year, maybe 18 months, I've gone to more of a sort of uh, a, a cut shot, which yeah. is a lot more controllable. I was playing a little bit more consistently. Yeah. When I've come back, it seems to be much more of a... I don't know the fade is different from a cup, but it just seems to be much more, more pronounced. Than, there's yeah, more yeah. movement in it. Well, right, okay. Uh, and weaker. Okay. So that's the, the big issue. Okay. I've seen enough of your swing where I don't watch, but a lesson would start with me, you know, watching someone warm up, how they deliver the club, how they strike it straight down the middle like that. And they go, oh, I don't know why I'm here, actually. <laughs> it's the course that gets in the way. <laughs> That's the shot, isn't it? Yeah. That's just not. You see how weak I mean, it is. You've got potential to hit that with driver. Yeah. One in every 20 balls. Yeah. But you never hit that shot with any of No. So that's really interesting because your numbers are, are really different. You know, we, if we normally read this into like club data, don't we, when we're looking at new product and stuff. But actually, your numbers are really quite different there to what I'm used to seeing. Yeah. And it all relates back to this technique yeah. where you know, you're actually you know, you're limiting your, your range of motion. Yeah. And it shows in the shot, doesn't it? When you get it right. That's why it feels so easy when you hit it right, because there's more speed there. Obviously, didn't get a path then, but, but yeah. So that for me, that would be your standard bad shot. Yeah. Do you happy with that? That that's yeah, used to be. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And still, I think for me, when you put you know, decent enough, a decent enough swing on it. Yeah. You know, we, that that's still a shot that we need to be aware of. Yeah. But that's yeah. You know, the comp it's a completely different flight. I mean, yeah. I, I hate I hate to think what the difference in the peak height are of that those last two shots. Yeah. It's almost like the good one is double the height yeah. and stuff. So should we have a look at what? Uh, What's wrong? Yeah. The app we warmed up. Yeah. I think almost you know looking at that screen, that's another decent ball there. You can see. Is that got it? Yeah. Right down the middle, so we've got like five balls down the middle. There's a there was a, there was a weak one in there. That, that's a really good, yes, yeah. you know, summary of it is, honestly, what's going yeah. on at the yeah. minute. Is that that sort of elongated? There's one long left, yeah, short right, yeah, and then there's absolutely you know, 
Well, there's five down the middle, but one was one or even two was short and weak, even though they were down the middle. Do you know what I mean? So that's again the kind. Of, well, that would summarise my game. We, we always read some comments, don't we, about your, your back swings a lot. It is, yeah. How flat it is and all that. Well, I, you know, well, I think talking about that is really important because you get the club on the inside. You, you, you take it flat yeah. and on the inside, but the club comes inside of your hands. Yeah. Which is really important for you because at the top of your at the top of your back swing, your hand path goes steeper. Yeah. So if your club. And, and this is where I, I love talking about matchups because, you know, people, if you do something, you have to undo it in the golf swing because we all stand very square at impact, you know, the club face is square, the body is square, everything, you know, good settle. So your club goes inside your hands yeah. and on the inside. So when your hand path changes on the outside, which is your traditional move of a slice of the ball, yeah. if your club is outside, you know, also in, in line with the hands or outside the hands, and your hand path steep goes outside yeah. of where it went on the way back. The club will then be way outside, yeah, you and you'll become a massive slice. Like, yeah, yeah, which is your your, your typical slices move. Yeah. They come way across the ball. So what you in that changing of the hand path, because you've gone low and on the inside, when you change the hand path, the club is behind. So. The way I think the, the best way to, for people to visualise that, and, and we, you know, we've got some footage there that we'll we'll play over. If you look at uh, someone like a Matt Wolf, would be the opposite. He 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 takes it up in this way and, drop it way, inside. and then drops it inside. Yeah. So he's making a you know he's trying to flatten the swing. Yeah. So in the back swing, he he's he's like this, and then he drops it. Where you are compensating for for your hands. So. You know, if, if actually people look and I, you know, when I had a look last night, I went through some of the course videos that we've done. People can go back, they can pause halfway down on your downswing, and the club is in a great position. Yeah. Halfway down on the downswing, so a couple of feet before impact, your club is absolutely textbook. And you know, not, you know the, the specific videos I was looking at, you were playing quite well. Yeah. So what's happening is, is you're, you're just doing something in your in your backswing which is not yeah. getting which is getting you in a in a it what looks like a bad position yeah but it gets you in the correct position halfway correct. down yeah and, and that's why you hit good shots yeah um, but what is happening here is when you take it lower on the inside yeah you will you, you will essentially bow the wrist yeah. yeah there's no way of getting that on the inside and low Without. and not changing the angle there to, to be to, to a bowed wrist uh, but what we're finding, what was happening now and here, and what's causing that weak right is, you know, you're going from this position with sort of a neutral or, or bowed wrist coming down, is you're getting a little bit cuppy. Yeah. So actually, the complete opposite of, of where you are, it's adding loft, it's making the club face weak and yeah, open. open. Yeah. So when you, you know, we've reverted to a bit of a cut, and we can see there from the track line, which your path is. You know, uh, four or five degrees across, mm. so sort of out to in here. If you do that with a sort of you know a club face that's sort of square to the path or square to the target, it's going to go straight or it's going to curve back to the target. If you have that path with an open club face with a cup wrist, got the slice. That's it. Yeah. So you're adding loft, you're losing distance, and you know the big thing for you is as well. You're quite a low spinner of the ball. Yeah. You know, and. Um, you're adding a load of spin for the first time, you know, some of them shots are really weak and spinning yeah, 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 and short, yeah. aren't which is, you know, one thing that I always say with your irons, you, you're a strong guy, you know, your distance with your irons are strong, aren't they? Yeah. So again, you, you can always, when you hit a weak one, you know, I think, you know, again, we go back to that self-diagnosis. Able to identify it Exactly, away, yeah, you yeah. know, if you see a flight do this, yeah. it's not your flight, you know, it's quite a penetrating, strong yeah. flight, isn't yeah. it? So again, something that you can look at when you hit some. Okay. And I think that uh, what I will say is it, quite simply a great explanation from Lou in the sense that I certainly understand what he's just said there. It really does resonate with everything that's happened uh, in the last few weeks. It's bang on. The thing I need now though, Lou, is what's the solution? Is the, yeah, the drill. So this is the key. So knowing what's going on is, oh, you know, it's not even half the battle. It's, you know, it just gives you clarity on Yeah, yeah. You know, and I think what's important is I've told you where you, what, who's good swings, and hopefully that will bring back some, you know, 
oh yeah, actually, I mean, yeah. I, I know, I know what I'm doing. I've seen that. Yeah. Most people have seen that swing on film. You definitely have. So, yeah. so I think what's important is that the, the main thing is, <clears throat> I personally think after so long away, is your hand path has changed too much to go at the top of the backswing. That loop, that cast. Yeah, yeah, I, and I, I certainly think that's what's causing the two-way miss. Yeah, you know, I think. Um, the the hand path has got two outside, yeah. and essentially you you've then got nowhere to go. So the club is quite sort of out and, and up, yeah. what would be up sort of outside and sort of steep. So what we're going to try and do is just give you a drill to to really you know, do the complete opposite. So this is a drill that you wouldn't use any balls. Yeah. You know, it's just nice and easy. It's something that you know someone like um, I've seen Justin Rose who I can't get in there and put you in that position. Because obviously no. we're still socially distanced. So do you I'll want to stand in there? Yeah, yeah, I'll just demonstrate there? that for you. So what, what we're going to get to do is just get to the top of your back swing and stop. Because again, we're not, we can change that. Yeah. You know, if, if you come to me and said, right, Luke, I want to be scratching yeah. 12 months, like we, we would probably have a look at yeah, like, changing. Exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. So it's all about what your desire is and what your goals are. But essentially, right now, is we just want to get you hitting it better. Yeah. Okay. So take it to the top of your back swing and stop. So we're going to go long one on the inside, get it to here, and then what we're actually going to do is we're just going to, from there, take the club straight down to the floor, okay, and slide it across the floor. So what that does, when you get it from here, uh, you're taking the club out, you know, and, you know, and from yeah. there, the only way is down, so you're actually, to, to create room for the club, at impact, you're, you're getting this position, yeah. okay, which again, you're, through good hands and obviously being a, you know, a decent player, you're creating room for the club that really isn't there. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to get to the top of the backswing. We're going to put the club right on the floor. We slide it across the floor like this, and what you'll feel is the club face now being nice and passive because it's on the floor, but the wrist angle not changing. So it, sh it right. shouldn't feel that alien to yeah, you. Yeah. Obviously doing this, and all we're trying to do there is stop that that there, which I think is the root cause of yeah, yeah. the maxi box causing the bad impact position. So if you just come in and try that one for me. It. So it's that bit where it goes down, gets lower. That's the uncomfortable bit, isn't it? Yeah. So it's not actually we've diagnosed it, the root cause being club face and wrist angle. But but if you if you don't make that move where the hand path goes out, then essentially the wrist angle doesn't have to change. Yeah. So actually, from the top of the backswing to here, we'll feel really uncomfortable. Yeah. And then actually after that, probably feels pretty natural. Perfect. Yeah, that looks really good now. Okay, so I have a few full practice swings there. That feel better? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what it feels. It feels connected. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's it. So it should feel now is that you've got a lot more time, room in here, where actually you don't have to manipulate the club anymore to find space for it, if you know what I mean. Even though the start line is right, which yeah. is what you've been seeing lately, yeah. there is not a hint of the curve on movement, that set, yeah. which is fair. The ball, like I said, even from that, I actually got a little bit of math as well, but uh, that zero deviation, yeah. um, the biggest thing in golf though is, played many times, you can't play from sort of left or way right, but if, if that was, that's down the middle, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, yeah, it was not, but yeah. You know, again, I think, you know, we probably we've shortened up the process of going through that little. There you go. Oh mate. Yeah. So it, it doesn't. You know, essentially, it, it, it won't happen every time. But if you no. can just get that feeling of, you know, familiarity. You know, you're used to hitting decent shots, and recently you haven't been. Yeah. So actually hitting the ball at the middle, and looking up and seeing it fly straight. Great. 
How good's that? Oh, we hit three balls. I think three balls there. We won one that I felt like I said turned over, but the three balls were, I wouldn't imagine there's a lot between them. Fair. So you can see your path is now less across. Yeah. Which is uh, the ultimate aim. Oh, was. yeah, point mm -hmm. nine, yeah. Yeah. So your path that you know, average before, sort of four or five across there, yeah. it, it's, you know, it's less than New one flying, degree across yeah. there. Yeah. Which again, it, it, it's massive. You know, I think your, getting your path as neutral as you can is really important to you. you yeah. Know? I think club face varies a couple of degrees either way and that creates the sort of shot save but path is king to you. If you can get that right. Amazing. Great shot. That's four out of five, isn't it? To be fair, like. Yeah. Um unfortunately I'll just make a note of that because um Camera back here, it's really dark. We've we've already we've tried it this morning again. It's an unfortunate thing in terms of lesson. I know you can't see ball flight, so uh, trust you'll, you'll have to trust the explanation. Um, I mean, obviously there's a yeah, bit to back can, it up in terms of the screen throw there. Some, throw some data up there because those well, last two, yeah. the carry distance has gone up. The smash factor has gone up. The, the good ones now are better. Yeah, yeah. Because the, the strike is cleaner. The timing not there, but we we've quickly got to the root cause of it. Yeah. Actually, wasn't. You know, that's what was causing the bad shot. Yeah. But actually, There's your hand path has gone to the outside. Yeah. yeah. And, it, you know, essentially, me having a good understanding of your yeah. swing, anyways, has accelerated that process. Yeah, but any, know, you know, any, any sort of start of the lesson would start with a diagnosis. Identify. Yeah, yeah. yeah. identify. I think a uh, good point at this stage, really, is comments down below. How many of you kind of have come out of a lockdown and struggled? And what are you struggling with? I know that, I mean, I think that the trouble is, the reason I haven't done too many lessons, specific lessons to me, is I've got, I'm aware that, like I said, I've got lots of issues if I wanted, like Lou said, if you wanted to become a better golfer, there's lots of things I'd potentially have to change. And I don't do lessons because, A, I'm not committed enough or have the time enough to practice them what I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be doing to get better. Um, but also the other fact is that it's hard because my, the lesson you give me is not necessarily beneficial to people out there. Yeah, that's, that's why we have probably avoided it in the past, isn't it? That's what I mean. So you, you know, you can type, you can type in anything now and get it. Yeah, five hundred fixes for any <laughs> yeah. any bad shot, can't well, you? There's no real lesson for the masses, is there? Surely. Exactly. So we, we're going to, you know, we we potentially have a look in anything that relates to we see to my golf or your golf. Yeah. You know, which which we think might help, but. You know, what I think some people watching, you know, I have a lot of people come for their first ever golf lesson. And I think people potentially don't realise what goes on in a golf lesson no. and, and might be quite fearful of their swing yeah, yeah. getting ripped apart. Is you, you're the perfect example. Is I I spend a lot of time with you, but I don't pull your swing apart because, like I said, talk about their matchups. I just want you to swing the best version of yourself. Yeah. Um, and you know, and if the perfect swing, what you know, was the, created the perfect results. Adam Scott would win every week, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because it's it, aesthetically, yeah, it's very he's pleasing. Uh, all the right but he doesn't. So it's all about what works, what creates the good yeah, impact positions, um, and trying to avoid the bad shot. That's yeah. the uh, that's the key, isn't it? I like it. It's, it's, it's expectation from the individual as well. What are you expecting? Like, I'm not expecting you to say to me, and all yeah. of a sudden you're going to be a much better golfer than you were. But this is like you said, yeah. getting my strike back to something like it was, and that's it. Uh, like I said, so far. Beautiful. It's like chalk and cheese from where we started. It's, it's that, a, that's your shot, isn't it? Where yeah. the start line might be three or four yards right at the target, yeah. but it doesn't want to curve that no, way now. No, it wasn't. That's what I said, so it's, it's, it's very controllable. Yeah, that's it. Um, ball flight was good. And all of a sudden, now your swing speed's gone back up to where it used to be. Yeah. Because now you can actually turn properly. Yeah. You know. It was good. I mean, obviously that's uh, so. Like I said, it was a break for me in terms of uh, day three in this little uh, kind of experiment that I've done. Uh, thanks to Lou for coming back in. It's great to see him back on the channel. We're going to do a lot more in the weeks ahead. Again, now all these restrictions and lockdown has been lifted, so we we'll get back doing stuff on the channel. I think for me, again, in the lessons perspective, I think. Um, Louis's got a great short game, and again, maybe that's something that you can help me out with as well that we can have a look at in the in the next. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. And again, maybe some bits in there that might resonate with other yeah. people as well in terms of. But if anyone game. wants anything specific that they, you know, yeah, don't, don't feel free to post a comment down below. If we if you know, if we can re relate that to something in here for you, we can do a little video yeah, on great it. Idea. Then throw it in, and you know, if we can produce a little video on it, we'll yeah, give you a little shout great. out, can't we? Fantastic! Look, thanks for watching. Uh, I like I said. Um, 
I'll be back. So tomorrow now, I'll take this. We'll obviously do a bit of practice here today. Back on the course tomorrow for day four, that'll be. And uh, see, like I say, if I, it's all right doing it in the driving race, see if I can take some of this now out onto the course and see how we end up. And if the rain and weather perks up a bit, see if we can get a bit of a better score going, or at least some better ball striking out there on the course at Conway. So as ever, thanks for watching. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you don't already. Hit the like button. Like Louis said, comments down below. Any ideas or comments you want to make about this video or future videos, then uh, stick it down below. Thanks again, Lou. No problem. We'll see you soon. See you soon. That was really good, you know that.